Hi guys, welcome to some grade 7, 8 and 9 notes on Kamikaze by Theatre Scarland in preparation for your EQA Corey exam. I'm going to start with the noun Samurai. So Samurai is obviously a member of the Japanese warrior caste. Now if we go literally as I've tried to get students to do, the term Samurai has quite a few connotations already and, and the little meaning is um, that they are a warrior obviously but they rose to prominence in the 12th century and they dominated the Japanese government as well. Now, the warriors obviously had military skills. To be a samurai, you had to have a skill, but you had to also have pride in, in stoicism and disciplined culture. Discipline obviously means that you, you are disciplined enough to follow rules. There's going to be heavy irony within this poem. Um, and during this, I'm never going to see it, period, um, under the growing influence of Zen and Buddhism, Buddhism sorry, the samurai culture produced um, other things like arts and tea ceremonies, again, all linked back to this word, which is in the opening stanza of the poem. The idea of samurai was supposed to be a warrior who followed an unwritten code of conduct. So remember, this is massive to the poem. Um, they believed in bravery and honor, which is an issue for our pilot. Loyalty is an issue for our, our pilot. And obviously they believed in ritual suicide by disembowelment. Um, um, but again, in this instance, it's the kamikaze pilot as well. So they believed in suicide to defend the country. Um, incantations is massive here, so please, if this is a boring video, keep watching because if you go literally, it will give you everything you need. Number one, it's the chanting or uttering of words that you think have magical power, a spell or a charm, a ceremony, something associated with sorcery. And then here we've got um, something that conceals a lack of content. So all of a sudden, when we get the powerful incantations, because powerful, the adjective modifies that now, we, it, there's a suggestion that the propaganda of the Japanese government is so magical and so forceful and so persuasive that he can't say no. Carrying on with incantations, if you really want to go back in, back to you know the Latin, which is incantation, obviously it would be pronounced, di pronounced differently there, to put a spell on and to bewitch. So the question there again in terms of propaganda and the Japanese culture is have they bewitched these soldiers to join this type of culture? I'm going to go to enough now, um, adjective simply meaning adequate for the one or need, sufficient for the purpose or to satisfy, in a quantity or degree that answers a purpose or satisfies a need or desire. Now there's awful connotations here and a heavy irony that it is enough fuel, as we know, um, to honour Japan but not to return safe, safely. So again you have this, this um, notion that the country comes before the individual. Now when you go back to the meaning of to satisfy need and desire, well it's not the pilot's need the pilot's desire to die so therein lies the conflict within himself history obviously we know what that means but if you didn't there it is there a past notable for its important unusual or interesting event or and this is where we get more interesting act ideas or events that will shape the course of the future naturally when he returns home and we get it at the vulnerable halfway there his life and his future is totally different because he shunned so actually that word there can take on a total different meaning a little bit more about history is obviously the irony here is that he's not going to be remembered but if we go further are any of them actually remembered individually summarized in the kamikaze pilots or is it just a collective in which case they lose their identity which links the poem to remains where they are all letting fly and they're all the same and exposure where they're all in the trench so consider the lack, lack of identity there um most modal verb is massive, it's omni long individual. If you need it, it creates a bond between us and what the narrator is trying to tell us. He must have considered which is being the better way to die. It, it suggests that as a justification of the pilot's actions, but remember to Japan, there's no justification at all because it's betrayal. Um, the narrator is aligned with the pilot there and actually shows some sort of sympathy towards him. But again, I think that's got uncertainty about it. He must have done this and he must have done that. Now, the area of uncertainty is highly and sadly ironic because they shunned him when simply asking him why he returned home would have answered all of the speculation. Lexical phase, you know, I love a, a lexical phase if you watch some of my videos. We have a, a few at play in this poem. One is the natural world. We get peace and we get tranquility. We get the greens and the blues and the fish in the sea. Um, is the, the natural world the reason that he's come home? And then again, we have another conflict in the poem, which is man versus nature. Where nature is peace and tranquil, man is a war, as, you know, as usual, and when I say usual, I mean in our collection of poems. Green, blue, silver, you've got this vibrant imagery. 
Now that juxt juxtaposes the words associated with the Japanese culture at the beginning, like incantation, samurai, the fact that they've got this sword. Um, and, it, and within those two lexical fields, you have other words interspersed, like turbulent, dark, and die. So very, very subtly, um, our poet Beatrice Garland is always reminding us um, of the onus of being a kamikaze pilot and or a samurai. We are always reminded as well of the, con the conclusion of the poem. Dark reminds us that this, this will conclude with death. Turbulent juxtaposes safe as well. So if there's a turbulent flight, you could argue, um, he's safe when he returns, but you know, has he already died? Structure, if you, again, if you need all of his structure, please watch the full video, but the title Kamikaze links to the last word of the poem. You've got Kamikaze and die, not an accident. Clear, uh, sorry. Clearly reminding us of the tradition you were expected to die, hence one way journey in history, just enough fuel. Um, die is, I would think, you need to ask yourself basically if us being ostracised by society is the same as death, because nobody acknowledges the presence anyway. So actually, is he already dead and therefore should have give his life? So ask yourself what's worse, being shunned by your community and being alive or actually being dead. Your Volta is but halfway there. Um, but if you continue through this poem and you're looking consciously for the grade seven, the grade eight, the grade nine, though it is repeated, now that changes the tone as well. Conflict, remember our theme is power and conflict. The conflict is in the speaker's mind there. It's an external conflict, obviously, with Japanese culture, but because he's defying and dishonoring the culture. Remember, we get, um, uh, though he returned, my mother never spoke again in his presence. And then though again in that stanza, that's all I'm going to say. It was really quick. It is by no means everything. There's loads of things you can see about kamikaze, like the dark prince, the tuna being muscular and dangerous, and um, the fact that we get the repetition of remembered. I just wanted to do some more obscure words. Please check out my full video on the YouTube channel, and massive good luck in your English literature exam.